Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about Bayesian posterior model probabilities. It's actually going to be the first video in a three-part series. And so in this video, we're just going to talk about what you do when your alternative hypothesis is a one-sided hypothesis. As usual, down below there's a link to a PDF version of these slides, and up top there should be a link to the uh, playlist that this is a part of. All right, so in situations where you have sort of a null and an alternative, and the alternative hypothesis is a one-sided hypothesis, so that it means something like this. Your null is that the parameter value is less than or equal to a particular value, call that particular value theta naught, and your alternative says that it's greater than that value theta naught, then really, as far as a Bayesian is concerned, this is not a hypothesis test at all. Instead, you're going to find a posterior for the parameter theta, and you're just gonna calculate relative to that posterior the area under the curve associated with either the null or the alternative hypothesis. And that's going to give you your probability or your belief that that hypothesis is true. All right, and so the way we're going to do that is that we have the probability of the null hypothesis being true given the data. Well, the null hypothesis just says the parameter is less than or equal to theta naught. And so given our posterior, we're just going to calculate that area. Here's that probability that theta is less than or equal to theta naught. Given the data, that's our posterior, and that gives us the probability that the null hypothesis is true. We can calculate the alternative hypothesis, or the probability that it's true, just by doing the same kind of thing, but now taking the probability that theta is greater than theta naught. Okay. All right, so let's give a particular example here. Uh, let's say we have a binomial model, and we have a null hypothesis that says uh, the probability of success parameter theta is less than or equal to 0.5. And the alternative says that it's greater than 0.5. All right, so as a Bayesian, we have to assign a prior for unknown parameters, that's theta. We're gonna use our standard default prior here of being uniform zero, one, but you could go ahead and use whatever prior you want. But then you just derive the posterior according to that prior. In our case, it's going to be a beta distribution with parameters one plus y, the number of successes, and one plus n minus y, the number of failures. Now we've got a full posterior, now we can just calculate the areas under the curve left of 0.5 and right of 0.5 to get our two probabilities. All right, so for the null hypothesis, it's the area left of 0.5. For the alternative hypothesis, right, it's just one minus that. Okay, so doing the calculation here in R, using the R beta function. Uh, here in this example, we had, uh, what, three successes out of 10 attempts, and the probability of being less than 0.5 was about 0.89. All right, so that was just a demonstration of how you deal with one-sided alternative hypothesis when calculating Bayesian posterior model probabilities. In the next video, we're gonna talk about more generally applicable situations where you have a two-sided alternative. Hope to catch you there.